So I apologise for the weird lighting and everything in this video. I'm filming it at about two o'clock in the morning because it's been so fucking hot here this week. Like today has just been like swimming through gravy. I've never felt anything like it in England before. It's disgusting and it's only finally gotten cool enough to like think straight like or anything ah so yeah this is probably gonna at least speed me up and limit my waffling by the fact that I've obviously had to shut the window so I'm not talking to like everyone in the street with their windows open so it's gonna get sweltering in here in a minute so that's gonna kind of speed me up and stop me waffling too much hopefully so this is finally gonna be the BPAL video or I think probably one of two BPAL videos because I previously recorded this and it got so long and waffly that I think I'm gonna kind of have to split it into two things. So this video I just wanted to be vaguely informative about BPAL and why they're so awesome and all the stuff they do in the two sister companies as well and then at a later date I will make a second video just waffling about my own personal favourite BPAL stuff because that gets too over enthusiastic and too long because um, I, I do I have a lot of BPAL. I'll have to put up a little a little picture thing somewhere of my collection which is living in this desk over here at the moment and it's it's a bit vast and sprawling so I have lots of favourites to talk about. Um, but what I will do for now is I will leave in the, the thing underneath, I will leave a massive massive list of um, recommendations which I will split up into various categories, gothy smells and masculine smells and foodie smells and all sorts of things. There will be like such a massive thing underneath this video um, but at a later date I would like to have a big rave about all my favourite stuff so yeah hopefully this video will just be vaguely informative trying to enable everybody into spending all their money on BPAL like I do because I honestly think of all the crap that I spend my money on that I can't really afford I think BPAL really gives me the most joy like clothes you know you buy beautiful clothes but you only really get to wear them you know when you've got somewhere to go to wear them so you maybe get use out of them like once a week if that and then they just sit in your closet and they don't give you that much joy whereas perfume you don't have to be going anywhere to wear perfume if you're having a shit day it just makes every day happier and I find it like a really good kind of anxiety tool as well if I'm going somewhere that I'm really dreading going like you know a horrible doctor's appointment with a doctor I particularly hate or something like that I don't know it I find it really kind of grounding and calming and it just keeps me sane to have nice smells on me so I, I think BPAL is fucking awesome it makes me so happy um because yeah I remember like as a teenager being so desperate to find gothy perfumes that I kind of mentioned I have all this Asperger's heightened senses nonsense and sense of smell is definitely one of them although I don't, I don't think my sense of smell is as crazy as it used to be when I was younger but I've always probably for that reason hated mainstream perfumes that they just smell so kind of toxic and alcoholic and fumey and to me um plus the fact that they're, they're so fucking generic and they're so gender specific as well that you've got you know girly flower smells you've got the big scary like womanly mum is going to the opera type smells and then on the male side it's all really like cold and aquatic and kind of aggressively masculine and there's nothing in the middle and there's nothing you know outside of those categories that's all there is there's nothing really dark and gothic and interesting and evocative so I was always really frustrated you know typo negative singing about her perfume smells like burning leaves and I was like I want to smell like burning leaves too and I, I couldn't find anything and it felt it felt like this this chink in my gothic armor you know when you're a little teenage baby bat and you you want to be like as cool as fuck so you know you've got the eyeliner and you dye your hair black and you wear the swishy black velvet clothes but I felt like I was, you know, a two-dimensional creature. I wanted to be a three-dimensional creature with a gothy smell as well. I wanted this this extra dimension and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I think I found BPAL probably about 12 years ago, 13, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, oh my God, it was so refreshing and so amazing. It was like all my dreams come true in a website um you know that their their scent catalog is huge like everything you can possibly think of that smells nice you will find in their scent catalog from like graveyard dirt to dusty old books to gingerbread and coffee and beer and rum and blood and wine and absinthe and like anything you can think of you will find um and so many of the inspirations for the scents are really kind of 
gothic and literary and intelligent and awesome that there's um there's a Bram Stoker scent and a Mary Shelley and a Dracul scent and a Oscar Wilde and a Dorian Gray um and there's the Only Lovers Left Alive film that's got a collection there's also the Vampires Don't Sleep Alone collection so there's loads and loads of vampires there's a RPG section for role-playing gamers. I'm not a role-playing gamer, but I really love the RPG section. Actually, a lot of them are amazing. Um, so there's all this, like, you know, so much fucking thought and intelligence and awesomeness goes into these scents. And, um, you know, you you feel like you're do dealing with, like, a like-minded gothic genius. When you, when you give them money, it's not paying into this awful vapid vacuous kind of mainstream perfume industry where no one even seems to give a shit what the perfume smells like because it's just all about you know the image and the branding and no one gives a shit about the scent whereas Bee Pal it's all about the scent and it's awesome um and I know there are kind of quite a few little gothic perfume companies around these days Honestly, I've, I've not been impressed by anything I've tried by any of the others. I've tried some Nocturne Alchemy stuff. I've tried some Possets um, I've tried some shit. I can't think of the, the name of one of them, but the other one I've tried is don't know if I'm saying this right. Arcana, not been impressed by any of them really. Um, the Nocturne ones just smelt. They all smelt a bit the same. They all smelt a bit flat and bland and yeah. So I wasn't impressed by Nocturne. Posset stuff goes mouldy. Um, Bee Pal stuff never goes off. Like I've got bottles of Bee Pal that are like a decade or so old. And they still smell amazing, like Bee Pal, as long as you keep it out of sunlight in a fairly cool place, it will last pretty much forever and ever, and often they get better with age. Whereas possets, I've received bottles of possets, like in swaps before now, and I've been able to tell like by the label that it's quite old, and it smells like fucking rancid, like the oil has gone completely rancid, and it's like, what the fuck is that? So they're obviously using a lower quality of oil than Bee Pal do, or they just don't know what they're doing as much as Beth from Bee Pal does. Um, I think the one that really killed it for me though when it came to other companies, the thing that made me think, you know, fuck this, I'm I'm gonna stick with Bee Pal, was um, an Arcana scent called Morphine that I got a little decant of and I saw it, I was like, ooh, Morphine, that's a cool name, that's relevant to my interests. Um, you know, and then it, I smelled it and it, it just smelled like plastic Yankee Candle chocolate. You know, so for starters, it was it was this sort of horrible artificial chocolate scent. But more than that, I was just peeved by the, the lack of imagination that had gone into it. You know, like, mm, morphine's kind of an addictive thing, so let's make it smell like chocolate, because that's, like, kind of addictive. To what the fuck? Oh, it peeved me. It really peeved me. More than that, it was this bottle of black tarry ooze. When I tried to put it on, it looked like I had just smeared a shit across my wrist. I was like... How am I supposed to wear this? This is like a bottle of feculence, like uh, ridiculous. Um, you know, so to contrast the plastic chocolate unimagination of Arcana's morphine with a Bee Pal scent, I think one Bee Pal scent that really sums up how much thought and imagination and awesomeness goes into their scents is one from the Only Lovers Left Alive collection. It's the only one of those that I currently own. It's the one called Quintessence of Dust. It's not the most fascinating label, but I might put up a little picture somewhere. Um, but this one, it's I've only seen the film two times and it's been a while and I can't remember this exact scene. But I think basically he's he's pissed off with the portrait of William Shakespeare and he stabs it with a knife. So you've got in this scent all the kind of all the elements of like a library. So you've got like the leather of bookbinding and like dusty old pages and ink and like beeswax candles and candle smoke and a little bit of salty tears from where he's like angry at the portrait and then the knife metal that's stabbing stabbing the portrait and like while sometimes you do see this kind of imagination with the other companies that they they do put together all these elements most companies don't seem to actually be able to pull it off in in practice that most of the smells just smell muddy and confused or they don't smell anything like the inspiration at all whereas this one Oh my god, you, you smell every single note in there. You get like the ink and the paper and the leather and the candle smoke and everything and it just like speeds past your nose like this amazing high speed three dimension scent movie. Like it, it makes me feel like how being a dog must be all the time that you smell all this richness and amazingness, everything. It's like a little smell movie, so cool. Um, you know, so that's that's the difference for me between most of these other little companies and Bee Pal that they just 
yeah, lack of imagination and lack of talent in, in pulling off complex sense, whereas B Pow, like, serious genius, oh my god. <laughs> what else was I gonna waffle about? Um so yeah, I guess if you're starting out with B Pow stuff, I obviously I will link I will link lots of stuff below, including the websites and all of those things that are quite useful. Um if you're starting with B Pow, the collection is huge. I mean there is so much on the website it can be a bit kind of knowing where to start. Um, so I would say as a starting point, there's a search bar at the top of the website. So if you put into that, um, you know, any scent note you can think of that you like the smell of, be it clove or cinnamon or tea or rose or books or graveyard dirt or whatever, just put that into the thing and you will get the scent tag pop up and you can click on that and it will give you a list of all the currently available scents that you can get with that that note in um, and a lot of the stuff that's on the website permanently you can get little impsia samples of which look like that I think I think these are four dollars each I think um, and that will actually last you ages so quite a good way to start is to just do a, a big experimental order lots of little imps um, although there is there is the whole issue of the kind of rotating seasonal collection that there's a big collection that comes out every Halloween and every Yule and then there's like the Lupercalias in spring and then there's all this limited edition stuff that comes out one time only so this there's a vast amount of amazing BPAL that you can't currently buy off the website but there is the official forum which I will link below which has a sales page and a wanted page so you can quite often find things that aren't currently available also there's a fairly new Facebook sales page which I will also link and that has been really, really, really good for finding quite rare bee power. I found if you post on the Facebook sales page saying I want, I want such and such, um, you can usually find it. You know, literally within 48 hours, you can find someone who's got it and you can get it, and it's awesome. Although it makes me bankrupt, but it's still awesome. Um, what else was I gonna say? So I guess, I guess that's probably all to ramble about from the perfume oils without going vastly into a whole waffle about all my favourite stuff. So I guess moving on to the two sister companies. The first sister company is The Trading Post, which do so many different amazing things. Um, occasionally they do their own line of perfume oils, which are worth checking out, but they do other things with scents in as well. They do scented candles, which I've never been able to try because the shipping to the UK on the candles is like, Bruh. so I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to try the candles, which makes me sad, but they do lots of amazing stuff. One of the really cool things they do is the bath oil, um, which I didn't try for ages because I, I go through bath products so quickly. I was like, you know, with the shipping and everything from the US, is it worth the money when it's gonna be gone in a week? But I was completely wrong about that because it's bath oil rather than bubble bath. You only need the tiniest little dribble um, and they smell so amazing as well. You put a tiny bit in the bath and like the whole room fills with the smell and the smell like clings to you afterwards as well, which was always my real irritation with lush stuff that, you know, it smells so good, but you put it in the bath and it usually doesn't really smell of much and it certainly doesn't make you smell nice afterwards. And that always really annoyed me about lush stuff, whereas this, the bath smells lovely and you smell lovely and it's awesome and because it's an oil it makes your skin all soft and lovely as well so I love the bath oils they're so good I'm so addicted to them now like I can't imagine taking a bath in anything else which is a little bit expensive with the the US to UK shipping is is a slight thorn in my side when it comes to bee pal but I know there's nothing they can do about that um but probably my favorite of the bath oils is the Luna Sanguinum one which um is is formulated to be a dark meditative bath experience which sounds pretentious but when BPAL say it they mean it um this stuff is like therapy in a bottle like whenever I get out of this bath I feel so like chilled out and happy and loved and warm it's amazing it's just like a bottle of therapy um and if you don't take baths or have a bath um I, I still recommend the bath oils because you can use them as body oil you can wear them as perfume um, and they work really well for that. Like Luna Sanguinum is a weird one. Warner's perfume, like in the bath, it's all kind of murky, musky, sinister roses. But when I wear it as perfume, it it like turns into like candied roses. It's all like candy floss smelling. Um, Cause that's another cool thing about bee pal that because it's all natural essential oils and stuff and it's there's no alcohol or crap in there. Um, it does morph in this amazing way when you put it on that it kind of mingles with your skin chemistry and smells different on different people. 
Um, so you, and when they dry down, you get this whole like little smell story coming out that all the different notes come out kind of in an interesting arc. So when you get bee pal things, you, you have to try them on your skin. If you smell them in the bottle and go, you, you should still try them on your skin because sometimes they change completely and icky smelling ones become gorgeous. So it's really exciting. You never know what you're going to get. Um, another thing that I've recently become massively addicted to from the trading post is the hair glosses, which again, I didn't bother with because, you know, I don't really have that much hair and the hair I do have, I like to stick up. So I don't want to weigh it down with gloss or anything. Um, but because I've got my hair extensions, which are human hair, so I can treat them like human hair, I gave the hair glosses a try. Oh my god, they're amazing! If you have remotely long hair, like, having it all swirling around you, it gives you, like, this aura of gorgeous smell, it's incredible. Um, probably the most amazing hair glosses, I would say, come out with the Halloween collection. I got two last year, I got one that's called, I think, tobacco flower, clove and grave soil, which just smells like goths smoking cloves in a graveyard. It's got like the cold night air and the clove cigarettes and the like overturned grave mud. That one's really spooky and awesome. And there's another one called Eldritch Dark, which just smells like a BDSM dungeon. It's all like spanking leather. And you, you feel like a badass supervillain when you have like hair that smells like graveyard dirt and BDSM. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and again, the hair glosses, you can use them as body oil and perfume and everything. So like, even though I don't wear my expense, my, my, bleh, bleh. it's getting hot in here. My brain's frying. Even though I don't wear my extensions all that often, I wear it quite a lot as body oil and stuff. Um, and actually in shorter hair, you can kind of use them as like a leave-in conditioner as well. If you want less of a heavy gloss. So when your hair's still wet, just spray it on a brush or your fingers and just kind of brush it through. And that gives you a little bit of scent without it being so heavy. So, oh, they're so, they're so, so multi-purpose. I love these things. I actually, I've never met a hair gloss that I haven't liked, which is crazy. I've got like quite a few of them now and I like all of them. The hair glosses are amazing. Um, and the final thing that I've tried from the trading post that I really love is the atmosphere atmosphere and linens but my brain is like right now i can't speak anymore atmosphere and linen sprays are very good um some people use them as room sprays by kind of spraying them in the air i've not tried that because of having stupid chemical sensitivities i don't want to breathe stuff in um so i just spray them on clothes and like you can have pajamas that smell like gingerbread you can spray it on your bed sheets and have like a sexy smelling bed if you've got a t-shirt that's been trodden on all over the floor and it's a bit sweaty and scrunkled and icky you can you can get another day's wear out of it with this and it's so much better than febreze no one wants to smell like febreze you can you can smell like sex instead um my favorite one ever without a doubt is doc constantine's medicine show which is from the general catalogue so you can buy this from the website without any hassle at all um and this is like it's it's just the sexiest boy smell in the world it's so like comforting but sexy at the same time if i ever have any kind of boyfriend again he will be drenched in this 24 7 and i wear it all the time i fucking love this stuff if they made it as a perfume oil i would totally love that because you can't these these room sprays shouldn't be worn on skin um but you know, everyone wears clothes we're not allowed to be naked so you've always got clothes so you can always put it on your clothes and it's awesome um and i think i think probably that's oh no that's the end of the trading post the second the second sister company is twilight alchemy lab which is like magical ritual blends um so uh, it's going dark so they're not formulated to be nice smelling perfumes they're formulated for kind of ritual use and stuff like that um i quite like milk and honey which is a kind of general love and money kind of all the stuff that's good bring you all the good stuff kind of blend i also quite like glamour and charisma which i don't know are quite nice just for a little ego boost when you're going out you feel everybody likes me everybody likes me i'm awesome kind of thing um the one the one twilight alchemy blend that i had the weirdest fucking experience with that kind of convinced me yeah i think i think these things definitely work and i think you should use them with caution um is a blend called amore which i had a little sample of i wore it literally one time when i went out clubbing last halloween and you know i, I wore it just thinking oh, i'll see what happens mostly hoping that it would act on me just hoping that it would make me less kind of weird and asexual and make me more attracted to other people and 
I went out to the club, I saw this guy, I'd known him for about a year, didn't know he was crazy, interacted with him for maybe 15 minutes at most, we danced to a couple of Sisters of Mercy songs, nothing weird, I went home, next day I got an email that was about 5,000 words long, just crazy, crazy, telling me that I'd been glowing with an unearthly light the night before, that like analysing every one of my facial expressions and what it meant, telling me that we were in this intense psychic love affair. Fucking crazy. The crazy went on for several days afterwards. I had to block him out of my life. I was genuinely concerned for my safety by the end of it. I will probably tell this story in more depth at some point because it was mad. But, I mean, obviously the crazy had been brewing for some time in his case, but the fact that it all came out so intensely... The one night that I wore that kind of love oil, I found quite, quite weird. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to wear that one ever again. That one's, that one's a bit much. Um, but yeah, I, I think they definitely work. I think they do good things. Um, you know, as with all kind of ritual, be careful what you wish for stuff. You can't always direct it in the direction you want it to go. But I think, I think they're fun to play with. And I think I've got a couple of decants coming from a friend soon, which I'm keen to experiment with. So if I have good results, I will have to update. Um, and I think that's basically all I had to waffle about with BPAL stuff. But yeah, some point I will make another video just completely rampaging through all my favourite BPAL stuff. And I will leave a, a huge bloated waffly list of recommendations and reviews below. Um, on the subject of reviews, the BPAL forum has so many reviews it's such a useful thing um so if there's any sense that you find on the website or anywhere else that you're thinking of getting go to google first and put in bpal madness reviews or do i no i just put in bpal madness and then the name of the scent and you the first hit will usually be its review thread and that way you get you know a whole load of people saying what it really smells like rather than kind of what it's intended thing and that's kind of gives you a much more balanced view and you can see is that something that I'm gonna like I don't know um so yeah that's really useful I will list all of this stuff below um and I think that's all I wanted to waffle about I suppose the final thing I'm gonna end with is one scent that I got recently it's quite it's a fucking really difficult to get hold of actually because it came out in 2009 and it's really popular um there's a one called velvet unicorn and it's got a pretty little picture on the front and this one is like it smells like a fizzy neon rainbow it's like rainbow fizzy candy like just just a fizzy hyperactive sugar rush of a rainbow and i really love it it's such a happy summer smell um and this one has kind of become really special to me because it smells when i first smelled it i was like that that is like the essence of gretchen my friend who died last year that um she was such a neon rainbow of a person she loved everything rainbow colored i think of her every time i see a rainbow um, and she would she would make these, these like crazy disgusting ridiculous cocktails you know with all these flavored vodkas and energy drinks and then she would t chuck in like a handful of fizzy sweets it's just this, this like this toxic waste fizziness in a cup and when I smelled this I was like that that's fucking Gretchen in the bottle that's amazing so it will always be really special to me and I really hope I can come across a second bottle someday but I probably won't but I love it so much but yeah I think this is what I love about BPA stuff that so many of them are so kind of evocative of stuff it's not just a really simplistic boring kind of ooh smells like a banana there's all this thought and backstory and stuff goes into it and you do meet so many of them that are so evocative of something to you a place or a person or a memory it's, it's really cool so yeah I really love them and I totally, totally recommend everyone to get into BPAL stuff, be enabled by their stuff. Boys and girls, so much of their stuff is really kind of gender neutral, works on anyone. And there are a lot of sexy boy smells there as well, which I will list lots of below. Um, but yeah, get into their stuff. You will be bankrupt, but you will smell really good. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to shut up and go fucking open the window right now because it's so hot in here. I'm just going to like pass out in a minute. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Bye.